chicken. I've got wired legs laying there. Those are bent and ready to go. I've uh, made the beak out of clay and then painted that. Put a little glass eye in there. And I'm doing the shape of his head underneath that uh, crown-like red, you know, fleshy part on the top. So I'm just working on that part right now. Here's my rooster reference. And uh, I'm getting the shape of the body the way I want it. That little nib there at the bottom is where uh, I'm going to put this wire leg in, too which is going to stand on top of the lamb. I need to paint those. Uh, you know, I left them longer than I need them, so I can either take some off the top or the bottom with those uh, snippers. I could just cut that off wherever I need it. But it looks like I have enough to go up into the body. So I've taken a little bit of a, a acrylic paint, some ochre, and then some raw sienna. That's the golden acrylics. I like that the best. It's very good. I used to paint murals with that paint. Stands up to everything. You can scrub it. Here's my raw sienna. I'm going to mix the yellow and the uh, sienna and a little bit of white to paint those wire legs. There's a little titanium, titanium white. Just mix a little bit, you can see there. And my little plastic palette, you know, uh, leftover food that you get from a Chinese restaurant containers, you know, with a lid on it. it makes a great uh, artist palette. You can put the plastic lid on top and put it in your refrigerator and your acrylic paint won't dry out. So that's good for preserving paint. You want to use it the next day or two. Just give it a nice coat. Try not to, um, you know, use a uniform color. I like it darker and lighter. It just looks more realistic when you do it that way. Now the bottom part will go down into the lamb where my finger is, so I don't have to paint that part. Like I said, I could snip that off if I have too much top and bottom. Paint the next one. A little bit of sienna. A little bit of ochre. One coat usually does it. Let's put it on good. A little lighter color. And then just dab it on. So that it's a little bit darker there. That's good. Set that to the side to to dry. It'll be dry by the time I need it. That's what's good about acrylic paint dries pretty quick there we go now this is the tail feathers which it's just the general shape I made it cut it out of felt I'm going to decide where to put that on my rooster and uh, you can't see behind my there we go 
I'm going to knit it in from the back and just put some wall so I placed it where I think it's going to look good. You want to hold that in place while I knit it on the back side in place. And that should hold it pretty good. And then what I'll do is uh, turn it over and um, detail the tail feathers. Now if I was doing a whole bird, I would do it around front and back and curve it. But since this is a side view, I'm just going to do one side. And then make it look three-dimensional with... Uh, you know, needle felting the feathers on this side that I'm working on now. Okay. So, um, I have more ta tail feather that I need. And then this little red crown flappy skin thing. I think I got that the right shape. And his little, I don't know what that thing is called. I need to look that up. So poke that in there some more. That part of the tail feather. I'm going to add some here. It doesn't feel like it's secure enough in there. So I'm going to my reference. See, it seems like there's too much at the bottom part. So I'm going to make it look more like feathers. And uh, scallop that edge a little bit more. And just use my scissors that I got from my grandmother. She was a seamstress. And these are nice and uh, sharp all the way to the tip, so they're good for cutting. Now if you cut too much off, you can always uh, add more with your wool make the shape you want. And I was thinking about maybe uh, putting that on, but I think I'll just do that with a wall to create a more 3D look. I was going to add another little piece of felt in front of this uh, tail feathers. I'm working on this curve. Take a little more off. Thing is, you don't want um, you know even shapes. You want them to be irregular, or at least I do. So it's not very uniform. It's just a little more organic. I can always change it if I decide I don't care for it, but I think uh, that's pretty good for now. So, 
take some of my vermilion and poke it into uh, the crown part for the rooster. Now this takes a lot, of, uh, saves a lot of time because um, instead of having to compress all the fibers to get the shape of that, just cut your felt and then needle felt your felt and your shape is there and then uh, trim off the excess and that saves you a lot of time for these little parts and the felt and the wool go really well together and you can hardly even tell that uh, it was felt kind of the purest, you know, if you're going to needle felt, needle felt, everything, so, um, but this is felt and needle felt, so it's all needle felted. I can say that <laughs> unequivocally. And so I'm leaving a little bit of, um, you know, the loose wool so that I can uh, knit that into place. Maybe I should put that at the bottom. This is the comb. I looked it up. That's what uh, that little flappy skin thing is. It's called the comb. And uh, I'm needle felting this, uh, putting vermilion on it. And I'm going to knit it onto the top of his head. I've sped up the uh, film to... Uh, Move a little quicker there. And I have enough red that I can go around the eye because, uh, you know, that, that color goes around the eye and makes a nice shape. So I'm doing it from the back. I'm going to add some red on the back and that'll help knit that securely into position. It's harder, I think, to work small than big. So I'm just looking to see the proportion of my uh, rooster to the lamb. And there are the legs. They're all painted and dried, ready to go. Gonna beef up the back there to hold that uh, second leg, so I have something to poke into when I put the leg in there. Just shaping the body a little more to get the uh, attitude of the rooster. Which, of course, lends to the personality, and you want to think about, you know, the personality. You want your rooster, you know, to look proud, or, you know, like he's crowing. So you want to think about the personality you want to display. And make that come across in your sculpture. And this is the little knee that comes down from the bird where the leg will go, so I'm making that part now. Here's my dowel. I'm gonna, this really helps, you know, and so that I can put the leg in there. And then I'll put the glue in there and um, put my leg up in there now. I'm poking around the dowel to condense the fiber so when I put the, my wire leg in there it doesn't get caught on the loose fibers on the inside. That can happen anyway, that just means it's not condensed enough so um, that's a helpful tool. Also if you have a, a little dowel you can put in there you can knit your uh, creature around the dowel and then 
pull that out and then put your legs in. I do that a lot with my birds. And it just holds the position. Adding a little piece to his chest there because his chest kind of puffs out a little bit. There we go, that looks good. My camera stopped recording. So anyway, I used the dowel to poke in here and I put these wires up into the bird. Here, I just laid glue and then put wool over top and poked that in. I will add my little red cheek part if I can find it. That's going to go on there. There's my little cheek part. And that's going to go on top of there. Like that. Farm animal stack. I have to put all the feathers in and uh, needle felt this. I'm gonna put his little I don't know what that thing is called. And that's that. I attached um, this to the cow. We're going to put it in a frame. So I'll show you that when it's all done. my auger, poke two holes, and push that right in there. 